Let's get weird into it. Number nine, the sun dog. Imagine you're driving on a crisp, cold winter day. The sun is low, the air is sharp, and everything is glittering with ice. You glance up towards the sun and your brain short circuits. Because there isn't one sun, there are three. One in the middle, the real one, and two perfect blazing copies flanking it on either side like celestial bodyguards. For a second, you genuinely consider the possibility that you've finally slipped into a parallel dimension, or that the sky has decided to hit copy-paste one too many times. What you're seeing isn't an alien invasion or a sign that the universe's graphics card is failing. It's a sundog, or its much more metal-sounding scientific name, a parhelion. Your atmosphere is currently full of millions of tiny, flat, hexagonal ice crystals, all drifting down like microscopic stop signs. They're lazy, floating horizontally as they fall. When sunlight, which is just a chaotic mob of light waves, barrels into this crystal field, something very orderly happens. The light enters one face of the hexagon and gets bent, just like in a prism. But because these crystals are all oriented the same way, like a disciplined army, they bend the light at a very specific, predictable angle. 22 degrees. So the light comes in, gets a 22 degree kick to the side, and shoots out towards your eyeballs. Your brain, which is a clever but ultimately simple machine, assumes light always travels in a straight line. It traces that light back and says, aha, there must be a sun over there. And it does it again for the other side. The result is two bright mock suns, shimmering at a perfect 22 degree angle from the original. They're not ghosts. They're just geometric echoes of light, a beautiful, large-scale optical illusion. So no, you're not going crazy. The sky is just showing off its basic geometry homework, creating a cosmic participation trophy so the real sun doesn't feel lonely. Number eight, light pillars. Okay, so you're standing outside on a frigid night in some sleepy northern town. You look up, and it looks like the alien abduction beam you were always promised has finally arrived. Not just one, but dozens of them. Massive, vertical columns of light shoot straight up into the sky from the ground, looking like the world's most holy parking lot, or a sign that a video game character just found a rare loot drop. These are light pillars, and they're the sun dog's taller, more dramatic cousin. Like sun dogs, this glitch is all about ice crystals. But instead of being high up and flat, these crystals are closer to the ground, and they're shaped like tiny plates. As they flutter down through the cold, still air, they orient themselves horizontally, like a clumsy waiter dropping a whole stack of dishes in slow motion. Now, think about what happens when light hits a flat, reflective surface. It bounces. Each one of these millions of tiny ice plates acts as a microscopic mirror. The light from a source on the ground, a street light, a car's headlights, a house porch light, shines up, hits the bottom of these ice plate mirrors, and reflects straight back down towards your eyes. But because there are millions of them stacked vertically in the air, your brain connects the dots. It sees a continuous line of reflected light stretching up from the source into the heavens. It's not a tractor beam from another galaxy. It's a celestial hall of mirrors created by the collective power of frozen water vapor and the municipal lighting budget. You're not witnessing a divine event. You're just seeing the glorified reflections of a thousand Toyota Corollas trying to find their way home. Number seven, the green flash. We've all watched a sunset. The sky does its whole Bob Ross routine painting streaks of orange, pink, and red. The sun, a giant burning orb, slowly dips below the horizon, and we think, neat. But some people, the patient ones, the ones who heard the legend in Pirates of the Caribbean and actually believed it, are waiting for something more. They stare at the exact spot where the sun vanished, holding their breath. And for a split second, a brilliant emerald green flash can appear right on the horizon. It's so fast, you'll question if you even saw it. Was it an afterimage burned into your retina, a hallucination, or a soul coming back from the dead? It's actually the atmosphere putting on a little magic show. As the sun sets, its light has to travel through more and more of Earth's atmosphere to reach you. Our atmosphere acts like a giant sloppy prism. It takes the white light from the sun and splits it into its component colors, just like a rainbow. This is called atmospheric dispersion. The different colors of light are lazy at different levels. Red light is the laziest. It barely bends at all. Blue and violet light are hyperactive. They get scattered all over the place, which is why the sky is blue. In the middle, you have green. As the sun sinks below the horizon, the red and orange light, which follows a straighter path, disappears first. For a brief moment, the upper rim of the sun is still visible, but only its most bent, most resilient light can make the journey over the curve of the earth to your eyes. 
that light is green. It's the last man standing in a race of colors. For a single glorious second, the green light gets its moment of solo fame before it too vanishes. So that mythical flash isn't a soul returning to the world of the living. It's just the universe performing a fleeting physics trick for you, before plunging you back into the boring, non-green flashing dark. Number 6. St. Elmo's Fire Picture this. It's the 16th century. You're a sailor on a wooden ship in the middle of a raging thunderstorm. The sea is trying to swallow you whole, the rain is coming down in sheets, and the sky is cracking open with lightning. You're holding on for dear life, convinced this is the end. And then, something impossible happens. The tip of the ship's mast begins to glow. A cold blue-white flame flickers into existence, dancing along the rigging. It doesn't burn. It doesn't give off heat. It just is. You've never been more terrified in your life. This has to be it. Ghosts of drowned sailors, a curse from the sea gods, the devil himself come to claim your ship. What you're witnessing is St. Elmo's fire. And it's not fire at all, it's plasma. During a powerful thunderstorm, the atmosphere becomes intensely electrified. The electric field is so strong that it starts ripping electrons away from the air molecules around sharp pointed objects, like a ship's mast or an airplane's wing. This process, called ionization, creates a supercharged atmospheric soup, plasma. And when those agitated, electron-stripped molecules try to return to their normal state, they release energy in the form of light. So, you're not seeing a ghost. You're seeing the air itself being so electrically stressed out that it's literally glowing from the pain. The air molecules are having a very, very bad day, being torn apart and put back together at a rapid rate. Bizarrely, sailors eventually came to see this terrifying spectacle as a good omen, a sign that their patron saint, Elmo, was watching over them. So, while the very fabric of the air was being tortured into glowing, the sailors were down below thinking, Phew, we're saved. Number 5. The Brock Inspector You've climbed a mountain. You're exhausted, cold, but you made it. You stand on the peak, shrouded in mist, with the sun behind you. As you look down into the clouds below, you see a figure. A towering, human-shaped shadow, immense and silent, standing in the mist. And then you see the halo, a perfect circular rainbow, a glory framing the figure's head. The shadow moves when you move. It raises an arm when you raise yours. It is, without a doubt, your own personal god, or at least your giant holy ghost. This is the Brock Inspector an illusion so powerful and personal it has driven people to madness. It's named after the Brocken, a peak in Germany where frequent mists make the phenomenon common, and where local legends of mountain spirits were born. The science is a perfect conspiracy of optics and perspective. The giant part is a trick your brain plays on you. The shadow is cast on water droplets in the mist at a varying distance. With no reference points, your brain can't judge the scale, so it defaults to freaking huge. The spooky, ethereal movement is because the clouds and mist are swirling, distorting the shadow's shape. The halo, the glory, is the real showstopper. The sunlight coming from behind you hits the water droplets in the cloud, and the light is diffracted and reflected straight back at the source. You. It's a phenomenon called backscattering. Each droplet sends a rainbow-colored cone of light back, but you can only see the one that's angled perfectly toward your eyes. Since your eyes are in the center of your own perspective, the glory appears perfectly centered around your head. Someone standing a few feet away won't see your halo. They'll see their own, around their own shadow. It's an intensely personal phenomenon. For a moment, the mountain convinces you that you are the center of a divine event, projecting a 100-foot-tall version of yourself onto the heavens, complete with a halo. It's just physics, but it feels like you've accidentally discovered your own divinity. Number 4. Ball Lightning Of all the atmospheric glitches, this is the one that still gives scientists night sweats. For centuries, people have reported seeing it, a glowing, hovering sphere of light, anywhere from the size of a golf ball to a beach ball. It appears during thunderstorms, sometimes floating down from the sky, other times materializing out of thin air inside a house. It drifts silently through rooms, passes through walls, and then vanishes, sometimes quietly, and sometimes with a deafening bang. Accounts are terrifyingly specific. A farmer in 1936 reported a red ball of fire floating into his kitchen, burning a hole in his tablecloth, and then disappearing up the chimney. Pilots have seen them zipping around the cockpits of their planes. One account describes a ball of lightning hovering over a water barrel, bringing the water to a boil before exploding. This isn't a simple trick of the light. This is a physical phenomenon that seems to defy the laws of physics. And the scariest part? We still don't really know what it is. 
The leading theory suggests that when lightning strikes the ground, it can vaporize silicon from the dirt. This cloud of silicon vapor then reacts with the air, glowing as it oxidizes. It's a plausible, if slightly boring, explanation for what feels like a paranormal event. Other theories involve tangled knots of electromagnetic fields, or even tiny black holes left over from the Big Bang. No one can agree. It's nature's ghost, a free-range, self-contained ball of energy that floats around like it owns the place, occasionally boiling water for fun. It's a terrifying reminder that even in our modern world, there are still real-life monster stories that science can't fully explain, leaving us with a phenomenon that is, for all intents and purposes, magic. Number three, the morning glory. Imagine waking up in the Australian outback. You look to the horizon and see something that doesn't belong. It's a cloud, but it's shaped like a massive, perfectly formed tube, stretching from one end of the horizon to the other. And it's not sitting still. It's rolling towards you, like a colossal atmospheric steamroller, a horizontal tornado. Sometimes there's one. Sometimes there are up to ten of them, rolling in eerie parallel formation. This is a morning glory cloud, one of the rarest and most spectacular meteorological phenomena on Earth. They are so predictable in one specific part of northern Australia, the Gulf of Carpentaria, that pilots and thrill-seeking glider pilots actually make appointments to go surf them. So what is this thing? It's essentially a wave. A solitary wave, or soliton, moving through the atmosphere. It's formed by a perfect storm of conditions. At night, a sea breeze from the east coast blows inland and collides with a sea breeze from the west coast over a peninsula. This collision creates a wave of air that travels westward. As this wave moves, moist air at the front is forced upward, where it cools and condenses into the giant tube cloud you see. On the backside of the wave, the air sinks, which is why the sky behind it is often crystal clear. It's a single, massive ripple in the sky, a visible pressure wave that you can literally see coming. It's not just a cloud. It's a moving, breathing piece of atmospheric architecture. The universe decided to create a perfectly surfable wave in the sky and then made it an exclusive, recurring event in the middle of nowhere, just to mess with us. Number two, the Fata Morgana. You're staring out at the sea or across a desert, and you see it, a city. A detailed, shimmering skyline of towers and castles, floating impossibly in the air just above the horizon. It looks solid. It looks real. You are looking at the legendary ghost ship, the Flying Dutchman, or a lost city of Atlantis rising from the waves. This is a Fata Morgana, the mother of all mirages. It's not your standard puddle-on-the-road mirage. This is a complex, superior mirage that takes reality and turns it into a Salvador Dali painting. The name comes from the sorceress Morgan Le Fay of Arthurian legend, who was said to conjure phantom castles in the sky to lure sailors to their doom. And honestly, that's not far off from how it feels. This glitch is caused by an atmospheric lasagna. A layer of cold, dense air gets trapped beneath a layer of warmer, less dense air. This is called a thermal inversion. When light from a distant object, a real boat, a real island, a real chunk of distant coastline, travels through these layers, it gets bent. And not just bent, but grotesquely twisted. The boundary between the cold and warm air acts like a refracting lens, a powerful chaotic funhouse mirror. It can stretch, compress, and flip images. A small boat on the horizon can be vertically stretched into a towering spire. A boring flat island can be flipped and duplicated, appearing as a fantastical floating castle. You're seeing a real object, but the atmosphere is acting as a natural cosmic Photoshop filter, warping it into an unrecognizable magical form. Our greatest legends of ghost ships and phantom islands weren't born from madness or fantasy. They were born from the weather just being bored and deciding to become an abstract artist for an afternoon, making you question your own sanity in the process. Number one, sprites and elves. For decades, they were just folklore. Pilots would land their planes and report seeing impossible things high above thunderstorms. Brief, colossal flashes of red light, shaped like jellyfish or carrots, reaching up towards space. They were dismissed as hallucinations, retinal afterimages from lightning or just plain lies. They were ghosts in the sky. Then, in 1989, a physicist accidentally caught one on camera, and suddenly, the folklore was real. We call them sprites, elves, and jets. They are transient luminous events, or TLEs, and they are a secret, violent world that exists for milliseconds at a time in the upper atmosphere, 50 to 90 kilometers up, a realm we used to think was boring. When a particularly powerful, positive lightning bolt strikes the ground from a thundercloud, 
it creates a massive and sudden change in the cloud's electric field. To balance the books, the cloud discharges energy upwards into the ionosphere. This discharge is what creates these spectacular ghostly forms. Sprites are the giant, blood-red jellyfish. They can be 50 kilometers tall and are caused by the electrical field exciting the nitrogen in the atmosphere, making it glow like a neon sign. They happen so fast, less than a tenth of a second, that if you blink, you miss them. Elves are even weirder. They're rapidly expanding rings of light, hundreds of kilometers wide, that look like a shockwave from a celestial explosion. They're also caused by an electromagnetic pulse hitting the ionosphere. For all of human history, we've stared at the sky. We've mapped the stars, named the constellations, and watched the storms. And all that time, an entire ecosystem of celestial ghosts was dancing above the clouds, completely invisible to us. They are a stark, beautiful reminder that right above our heads, in a place we thought we knew, there are glitches in the system so grand and so alien that we dismiss them as fantasy for a hundred years, just because we weren't looking closely enough. Okay, my brain's tired. I'm going to go find more weird stuff. You know what to do if you want to see it.